Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's advanced Excel Quick Trainer, we are going to discuss simple linear regression. The target audience is students and those working in science or engineering field. The objective is to get you up to speed quickly on using Excel's more advanced features. For best results, put your play speed on 2x and or jump to the chapters of interest in the timeline below. First up, what is simple linear regression? So what is simple linear regression? Well, there's multiple definitions. At the highest level, simple linear regression is a forecasting tool. But it's more than that. Simple linear regression is the basic line equation, y equals mx plus n, that we all learned in middle school, where we use it to predict the value of y for a given value of x. So if we know that x is 4, we just go up till we hit our line and then go over to the y value of 1, and we know that if for a given value of x in our regression analysis, y will be a value of 1. N over here was the intercept on the y-axis, and M is the slope of our line. In this case, it's a negative slope. It's going downward. At a more granular level, simple linear regression is a model to find the best fit line for a given scatter plot. What does that mean? Well, these orange dots here are the scatter plot, and the blue line is what we fit with linear regression. An even more detailed definition of simple linear regression from Scriver.com is that simple linear regression is a model that estimates the relationship between one quantitative independent variable, that's our x, and one quantitative dependent variable, our y, using a straight line to best fit the scatter plot. The simple linear regression equation is y equals b plus mx plus an error value. We didn't talk about that yet. So y is the dependent variable, what we're trying to predict. There's a bunch of other synonyms for it, depending on what field you work in. x is the independent variable, that which we measure, a bunch of synonyms for it. b is the y-intercept value. m is the slope of the regression line. And e is a random error term. It's the difference between the actual y's and the predicted y's. One little note to add on. There are also nonlinear regression equations, curves basically. There's exponential, logarithmic, polynomial, and power. The above are all similar to simple linear equations, lines, because they all have just one dependent variable y and one independent variable x. 1x, 1x. There's only one x here. It may be x squared and x cubed, or x to the fourth or x to the fifth, however many polynomial clauses you have but there's just one x and one y. All of the m's, m1's, m2's, b, p, those are all constants. And that's why Excel defaults to a linear regression line but lets you play what if and try out other uh, simple curves that are single independent variable, single dependent variable algorithms or functions. And we'll see those demonstrated later in this video. And before we wrap up this chapter on what is simple linear regression, a second and final note there are three methods by which to run regression in Excel. We're going to focus only on number one here, which is to insert a trend line onto a scatter plot. So you have a scatter plot visible, you right click, hit the add trend line, and you get this dialog where you walk through and manipulate your regression line. The second method is using the analysis tool pack. And it's very sophisticated and very neat, and we'll demo that in a different video with multiple in your regression. But for the analysis tool pack approach, you use a data analysis button on the toolbar. It's a separate plugin that you have to add to Excel. And you do, you click regression for the analysis, hit OK, you get a nice dialog with lots of options, and it's really beautiful. You get a residuals graph, a residuals plot, a line fit plot, standardized residuals. You get a lot, of, and you get to establish the confidence interval if you want to a lot of options. It's really powerful, but we're not going to deal with that in this video. But I just want you to be aware that it's out there. And the third way that you can do simple linear regression within Excel is by using formulas. So this is the same data we're going to be using for the next five or ten minutes. There's an X, there's a Y, there's time, there's distance. You can actually set up a formula, this equals line est, linear estimate, and you give it the B3 to B12, you give it the y values, and then you give it the x values. And it'll predict the m and the b for you, the slope of the line, and b, the intercept of the line, y equals mx plus b. So 
There's my data, my X's and Y's. I plug it into the equals line est and get those values. And you can do some pretty powerful stuff with it, but I'm not going to demo it in this video, but I just wanted you to be aware of it as well. Next up, how to insert a trend line into a scatter plot. So in this chapter, we're going to learn how to insert a trend line into a scatter plot. We start first with some X and Y data, like is shown here, our observations for X, time and minutes, and Y, the distance we were able to travel. Next, we highlight the X and Y cell range, including the column headers, and then we select the menu item insert, and then the uh, toolbar section or area charts, and little drop down for scatter plots, and there's a lot of options available, but just go ahead and select the standard scatter plot with no lines connecting the dots. And that'll pop up a scatter plot with all the little rows that we had in our previous XY table. Next, we right click any scatter plot point, and as soon as you right click one, they all get highlighted with the little dots around them, and a, right, a pop up menu occurs. And uh, we want to go ahead and click add trend line from that pop up menu. And Excel will add a linear regression line. It's the blue dash line that's underneath the yellow highlight. And that line is the best fit for all of our little blue dots from our XY table. Now, if you double click the trend line, it'll pop up a format trend line box. And in that format trend line box is a forecast section. And we want to take and do a forward forecast of 60 periods on our uh, linear regression line. And when we do that, here's what it looks like. So our original graph went, had data, the blue points that went out to 80 total minutes and roughly 80 miles. But when we told Excel to forecast through this forecast setting, it extended 60 units from 80 minutes all the way out to 140 minutes and then did the same with the distance. So this purple area is our forecast section of the line. And basically it's just extrapolating out the line that was already there. But it's nice that you can do that. You can go in either way, forward or backward with your line. There's going to be times you don't want to go backwards because maybe negative doesn't make sense or maybe as it approaches zero it doesn't make sense. And likewise, there's times you may not want to go forward if you're using one of the curve models instead of a line model. But we'll talk about that later. Next up, how to apply format options to a trend line. So in this chapter, we're going to discuss how to apply format options to a trend line. And remember, you can always double click the trend line and it'll bring up the format options dialog box of which this gray section up here is just one little part of it. So to begin, oh, and in the last section, we took the forward and bumped it forward by 60 periods. Well, in this section, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go back 11 periods because we want to extend the blue predicted line all the way back until it intercepts the y-axis. And so I guessed that it would be 10, put 10 in there. It wasn't quite far enough, so then I had to bump it back to 11, and then that finally intercepted the y-axis. Um, next, it's always a great idea in the forecast uh, section to tick display equation on chart and to tick the display R squared value on the chart. And in yellow here, it gives you the equation, y equals 1.006x minus 2.102. So the slope is not quite one to one, but a little bit greater. And then the negative 2.102, that really should be zero, because I know if I sit in a chair and, <laughs> and I spend zero time going somewhere, then my distance is going to be zero miles traveled. So the negative two is just an artifact of the regression line being a little bit off. And we're going to deal with that in a second here. But uh, the R squared is the correlation coefficient. And it's fantastic to always include that when you're doing linear regression. That tells you the quality of the relationship between your X and your Y values. So I know that if it gets one, 100%, that means it's just it, that means that every one of these dots is exactly on the line, basically. It means that your line perfectly predicts all data. So you're probably never going to see 100% unless you have manufactured data. But this is really a great tool. So if it gets down below 85 or 80, then you start to go, eh, that's not a very good model. But in this case, 98% is fantastic. Great R value. 
and we're going to deal with that orange. Go back up on. See the orange dot, the negative two? We're going to deal with it now. We're going to go to the forecast menu and we're going to tick the third checkbox to set intercept to zero. We're going to force the intercept to zero because I know the intercept should be zero. Now, there's a lot of times you can't make that assumption. The intercept actually validly is some positive or negative number. But in this case, I know it's zero. So I'm going to tick the checkbox and I'm going to just have it automatically correct the error. And my R squared went up 996 and it was 9831. And now when I set the intercept to zero, zero, all my blue point data options stayed the same, but uh, my R squared got better. Next up, are nonlinear trend lines or curves a better fit? In this chapter, we're going to discuss how to test whether nonlinear trend lines might be a better fit. Questions we will ask, how do we know the straight line that Excel defaulted with is the best fit? What other single X or single independent variable formulas could we try? And here's Excel's list over on the right from the Format Trend Lines pop-up dialog box. There's the default linear. There's an exponential up. There's a power up. Both are kind of similar. There's a logarithmic, flattens out. There's a polynomial where you can have an order. X2 means you have X and X squared. 3 means you have X, X squared, X cubed, and 4 go out to the X to the fourth, etc. Uh, be careful using this. The more you, the more variables you have, the more overfit risk there is with your model. Where your test data, you, you'll get a model that perfectly fits your test data, but it's worthless because when you run other data sets through it, the model isn't accurate. It's only accurate specifically tied to your test data. So be careful with this one. And then there's a moving average, which is frequently used for financial type data. Starting with our linear regression line from the prior section where we had our little XY data plot and the line in it, I wanted to do some trial and error. So I went in Excel's list and I clicked exponential. <laughs> Boy, it does not fit at all. The R squared is zero, the equation is zeroed out, and the line doesn't even show up. So no, exponential is not a better fit. It's a terrible fit. It has a terrible R squared. So next, I wanted to try logarithmic. Uh, equation to see if it fits the data. But no, we had 0.99 on the line. That was pretty good. It's like 0.992 or 0.994 or something. It was a very good R value. This R value with an exponential curve is 0.92. It's not as good of a fit. And look at the pink areas and you see why. Uh, when it trails off and goes below zero, that can't happen. You can't travel a negative distance when you're waiting a few minutes. It's just that it, that is bad. It's not realistic at all there. And then up here, it's not a bad fit right in here in the middle range from about 30 minutes out to about 50 minutes. But it's starting to get lower and lower and taper off. And it really is more of a linear relationship. So as we get out to 90, 100, 120 minutes, this um, logarithmic curve is going to get less and less accurate. Unless we actually got more data points and recalibrated the model. But if we just extrapolate and forecast the model, it's going to get less and less accurate. So no, logarithmic is worse than linear. So we move on. And if we try a polynomial with order 5, it's got a good R squared here, 0 0.9898, but it's cumbersome. Look at that equation, all those components, five different uh, clauses there. And the overfit here in the pink it, you, you can overfit your test data to perfection, but then that's far worse than the R, you'll get a far worse R squared when you take subsequent data and run it through your model. So be wary of overfitting, especially with a polynomial uh, equation with higher and higher orders. You're going to get the line to swing and touch all your test data. Great, you got a high R squared. But guess what? As soon as you get your next set of data in, it's going to have values that error a little bit higher. And maybe you have a curve that goes up and up. And now you're going to have an even worse R squared than you did here. So anyway, uh, the polynomial, use it, but be careful with it. And finally, try the power curve. And that was surprising. The power curve had a good R squared, 0.9898 as well. And it's a good fit. But the formula is kind of wacky. <laughs> 0.6997x to the 1.0805. Reminds me kind of a logistic regression equation. Anyway, if a line is a, a, a li linear equation, a line is 
similar accuracy, go with that. It's simpler. Always go with the simpler model. And in this case, the simpler model is still more accurate than this because it's 0.99 something. But power was pretty close. And the last possible option for a nonlinear trend line is a moving average. And the moving average, I put the little red squiggle. The moving average is a squiggle all over the place. So I ignored it. Now, you would usually use it in finance. Now, the reason it's a squiggle is because I did XY data. So I had this XY point was my first row, and then this XY point was my second row, and then this one, and then this one. So the moving average is jumping all over. I could resort my data so that the X's float in natural order in that XY table, and that would straighten all this mess out. But I'm not going to bother because I already know that the moving average isn't applicable to the data that I'm dealing with. Next up, example number one, a simple level set using linear regression. So in this example, a simple level set, I'm going to demonstrate the absolute fastest way to execute a simple linear regression analysis in Excel. So we have our X and our Y data. The time in minutes is X and the distance traveled is Y. And I'm going to highlight the ranges, including the column headers. I'm going to start by clicking there on the column header and then shift over to the right. Try that again, shift. What the heck? My scroll lock key, yes. Uh, Excel, sometimes the scroll lock key gets hit and your movement doesn't work and you're wondering why. If that ever happens to you, it's the scroll lock key. Okay, so I've highlighted the two columns and now I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, and Down. Now I've highlighted all of the data. And then I'm gonna go to the Home menu, pin it. And I'm going to go to the Analyze Data. That's really it. And the analyzed data looks at the data and bam, let me get rid of this, unpin it. It comes up with a chart. It comes up with a bunch of different charts and stuff, but I'm not interested in those. I'm only interested in the scatter plot that it put right up at the top. And I can just hit the plus here and boom, it inserts the chart. Oops, control Z. It inserts the chart for me just like that. Now there's a few cleanup things I want to do. Let me get rid of this box. Boom. And let me double click the trend line, which brings up the format trend line. And what do we want to change? We want to, I mean, we could play around with all these. I'm not gonna, I know it's a linear equation, but I'm gonna display the equation, display the R squared. In this data set, I know I can set the intercept to zero. Here, let me grab this and drag it out. When I do, I lost the formatting, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to have to do it from the home menu and pin it. And I want to clean this up a little bit, maybe make it bold so it stands out, maybe bump it up in size a little bit. If I want to go back to the format trend line, just double click the line or single click the line since the box is already up. And now that this is moved and we can read it and it's not mixed in with the lines, maybe I want to fix this title up. So I'll just highlight all of this, delete it, paste in something that looks a little bit better. I wonder if I can highlight those and home, pin it, and do the little font drop down and see if I can't do subscript. Yes, I can. That looks a lot better. And X for time. Drop that down, do the subscript. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So now I have a nice looking title and I have this. Maybe I want that to be formatted with a light blue. And I could change the fonts on these, etc. And there we have it. A nice pretty graph that was done so quickly by simply highlighting the data and clicking analyze data. And bam it'll give you a bunch of different graph options. Fastest way to do a scatter plot and a trend line already built for you. Next up, example number two, financial research using simple linear regression. So this is to example number two, financial research using linear regression. And what I've done is gone out to https finance.yahoo.com slash quote, et cetera, and pulled the last 30 days history of the Standard & Poor's S&P 500. The data that I pulled is the highlighted columns. The date, each day going back 30 days, the open at the beginning of the day, 
the close at the end of the day, the high for the day, the low for the day, an adjusted close, and the volume of trade for the day. And using this data, I went ahead and calculated uh, the high minus the low for each day. So 38.52, 38.30, the delta is 21.90. And then I also calculated the delta between the open and the close for the day. And we'll talk about the outliers later. So the yellow columns were calculated. Everything else was pulled from the spreadsheet. So the objective here is to use simple linear regression and try to determine whether there's any relationship between this delta and the volume, or this delta and the volume, or a relationship between the two deltas. And if there's a relationship, then on the uh, x and y axis, when we're comparing the two, I would expect to see some kind of a trend. If there's no relationship, it'd be a flat line, or it would just be dots all over the place in a scatter plot with no relationship. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Okay, let's get started. So first, we'll select these two columns and compare the volume versus the delta high-low, and we'll include the column names in there. Highlight both cell ranges. Insert charts, the scatter plot. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus here, and I want the axis titles. There we go. Ah, it doesn't have it. Oh, i got to type it in then. I'm surprised surprised they weren't included volume when I uh, copied them in as part of the source range. Control A, delete, delta, low versus high. And go ahead and right click a point and add a trend line and scroll down on the format trend line dialog, display the equation, display the R squared, I like that, grab this, move it out where I can read it. Ooh, 0.27, that's a terrible R score. Make this a bit smaller. That's too small. Drag this up, drag this. Now that's good enough. I want to be able to fit a couple on screen. Okay, so next up, let's compare the volume. Control shift down and the delta open closed. Hold the control key for the disjointed range. There, now I have two cell ranges, X and Y selected. Insert, charts, scatter plot. Once again, the axis titles aren't labeled, so I have to go do it myself. And so this one is the volume, and this time it is the, make this smaller. Delta open versus closed. It says it right there, actually. Control A, delta open versus close. Let's just get rid of that. Get rid of this so I can get a little bit more real estate. Ah, it didn't automatically adjust upwards. There we go. So oh, let's go ahead and right click and do a trend line on this and see if it's any good or not, add a trend line, defaults to linear, set, check, check, close, grab the equation, move it somewhere I can read it. Oh man, the R squared is almost zero, that's terrible. So, so far, this one theoretically has a relationship because it's not a flat zero slope line, but the quality of the relationship between volume and the delta low versus high is 0.27, that's not good enough. It needs to be 85, 90 range before it's a, a good R squared uh, correlation coefficient. So it can't trust the values. Now it could be due to these outliers and we're gonna look at that later. Over here, this one's terrible. It's a flat line, so virtually no relationship. It slightly goes up, but then the R squared is zero. So <laughs> that just, it doesn't matter how good the slope is as far as a measure of the relationship from one variable to the other. That's re the, the correlation coefficient of zero is just the, you can't trust results. Okay, so one more combination, scrolling up. So we did volume versus delta high low. We did volume versus delta open close. Let's compare these two deltas and see if there's a relationship between them. My computer's going really slow for some reason. Insert, charts, do a scatter plot. It's just, oops. 
control Z. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to grab the body and move the whole graph down. I have my screen shrunk, shrunk for the purposes of the presentation. It's hard to deal with. Uh, we'll get rid of this. And I'm not even going to put the axis titles, but it's one delta versus the other. I'm going to go ahead and add a trend line, and I'm going to make sure I have the equation and the correlation coefficient. Then I'm going to drag them out where I can read. Oh, man, it's a near zero correlation coefficient again. So there really is no relationship, at least with the raw data from the standard reports for the last 30 days. But I wonder about these outliers there and here. And so what I did is I looked at them and uh, 110 and roughly a little bit below 80. Well, there you go, 107 and 80. Those are the two outliers. So let's go ahead and... Home. Where's my filters? I have it so shrunk down I can't see my filters. Uh, there it is. It's a tiny, it's on the editing window. So apply filters and watch this. So watch these two dots when I do the drop down and I say unselect the X's. So here we go. And as soon as I hit OK, these two are going to disappear and the R squared is going to go from 0.27. It should improve because the scatter plot here has a pretty good relationship. It's a tight cluster around the line. It's just these two, I think, that are blowing the numbers off. So here we go. <laughs> so much for that theory. It's 0.28. It's better, but not much. I think, what was it before? It was uh, 0.27. Yeah, so from 0.27 to 0.28. <laughs> not much of a change. And down here, we're still at almost zero. And down here, well, that got a lot better. That was almost zero, and now it's 0.16. It's got a slight upward increase, but you know what? The correlation coefficients are so low that I would just toss all three of these and say, nope, no relationship between volume, delta high, delta low, any of these. They are all independent of one another. Now, I only took 30 days. Probably should do a lot more data, go back a year or two years. But anyway, interesting that there's no relationship between those. If there were, we would have found a slope, found a line, and found a high correlation coefficient. And finally, example number three solving a chemistry problem using simple linear regression. So example number three is to solve a chemistry problem. And it comes from my sister, a chemistry professor at a local university. And the problem definition here is that this is a dry lab where the data is provided to you and you must analyze it. Oh, I have a spelling error. Um, plot the following data. And there's quite a bit, row 12 down to 32, so about 20, well, there you go, two through 20. Uh, rows. So plot the data in Excel using scatter plot. The concentration values here, here are the x axis or the independent variable. And the signals that were recorded or observed or measured are the dependent variable on the y axis. So what we're going to do is use Excel to fit a line with linear regression to the data and report the equation of that best fit line. Uh, it's noted here, don't force the line to go through the origin. And that we also uh, have to report the R squared value of the line and include the scatter plot. So let's get started. So first we're gonna select the data. So control shift down, down again, and then shift, holding shift to go to the right. So I've selected all the data in the range, the X and Y axes, and I'm gonna insert chart a scatter plot, do the drop down. I want a scatter plot without the connecting lines. If I put the connecting lines in, then it's just that much busier and messier when I insert a trend line. So do just dots only. There we go. Uh, eh, I'll just leave it here. I'll move it later. So I'm going to first confirm that the data looks good to do a uh, linear regression on. And it does. You can see that a trend line would fit somewhere up in here. Now, there is a slight issue that we're not going to worry about. And that is that the data is tight, but then it starts to get wider and wider, and the error gets bigger and bigger as we go to the right. And if we were doing the uh, multiple linear regression and we were using the, <clears throat> the data and the data analysis and the regression, there's all kinds of really cool additional tools that you can use to measure that error, but we're not going to worry about it for this particular demonstration. So the data looks good. Let's go ahead and... Right click one of the points and add a trend line. <clears throat> and 
And let's go ahead and display the equation, display the R squared. The problem specifically says, do not force the line to go through the origin. So we're not gonna set the intercept at zero. We're gonna leave that alone. And it'll fall wherever it falls based on the source data and our test results. So there we go. Close this so we can see our graph. There's our equation. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more readable. Uh, let's go up here, home, we'll make it bold. Maybe we'll pop it up in size. Look at that, an R squared of 0.963. That's, that's a really good score, 96%. That is excellent. And there's our Y equals 0 0.0683. So it's gonna intercept it just below zero, negative 0 0.07, so it would be just below. And our slope is 0 0.068, wow. But nice. Uh, I noticed that there's no axis titles, and you should always have axis titles. So let's click on here, do a little plus. I'm in uh, Office 365, Excel 365 has this feature. Some of the earlier Excels may not have that plus, and you may have to actually go double click the line and then work your way through actually double click the axes. And then the formatting, whatever I click, the formatting changes to. So I click the axes, the format changes to the axes. I click the trend line, I'm formatting the trend line. I click a dot, I'm formatting the dots. And I can go over here and I can say, well, I want the marker to be, you know, whatever. Maybe I don't like blue, maybe I want it to be green. Is that green? No, that's blue. I have my yellow tinted glasses on there. No, that was green. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, anyway, so if I apply that and look, man, that's hard to tell. Anyway, let's stay focused and get back to the axes. And again, I could go to the axes this way and go over and axes options and fill it out. But no, I would rather use the plus, click it, and click axes titles, and Double click this, control A to select it all. And what did we say? We said the Y axis is signal. So I'll just call it signal and in parentheses, the units. Oops, units. And then we'll do the same down here. We'll replace the generic axis title, control A to select it all, delete, concentration, and the units were in MM. And get rid of this so we can see it all and drag it over. And there we go, done. Nice pretty chart, has the equation, trend line that matches the scatter plot. There's one last thing I can show you. Uh, Excel 365 has chart styles, so I'll click it and it pops up this and you could flip through different styles, dark, white, blue, etc. And I could click any one of those styles here, I'll click dark. And it does that. I'm going to hit that Control Z to undo. I'm going to click off and hit Control Z to undo it. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below. Also, be sure to check out our related videos in the boxes to the left.